And I like the haircut. Here with us now from Wait, no, hold on one second. Let's Stop. see this no. Melvin, no. what do you think? I love it. Don't you love her hair? I always love Mika. Everybody's criticized. Mika said everybody's criticized. I went to her the um, event at the, uh, Eve's de Reef last night. Yeah. They like it there. They like Nobody it there. Likes it. Everybody, she okay, walks I into her house, her daughter goes, Your I hair makes you look old. Supercharged Thank Sandy Duncan. But that's I love what daughters it. do to mothers, right? She is yeah. 14. She had, she had, she just went right there. But, All but, right. But, but, no, I think the hair looks good. You think the hair looks good? Supercharged Sandy Duncan. That's totally positive. I, I, I wouldn't say supercharged Sandy Duncan. You know whose hair <laughs> is fabulous? Who's, who's oh hair is God, always he's fabulous? Perfect. Wait till you see this man and see if you can find anything wrong with him. Seriously. He's perfect. Not one Ralph thing. Reed says that when he goes out hunting, his oh, camos look. are starched. And they're iron. Heavy <laughs> starch, <laughs> not a crease in look, them. Perfection. With us now from Capitol Hill, Republican Senator from South Dakota and Chairman of the Senate Republican Conference, Senator John Thune. John, you really don't deserve this. Josh I'm sorry. Green, we <laughs> yes. the conversation. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, actually, he does. Look at him. Oh, come on, he's great. He's Lord. perfect. Hey, so, John, uh, we, we've decided we're not going to call the sequester the sequester because it's so boring. We're going right. to call it, what are we calling it, Mark? Doomsday, doomsday budget devastation machine. machine. So the boom, doomsday oh. budget machine is, is, is coming Not towards funny. us. There's a front page story in the New York Times where both sides are starting to say, hey, maybe this won't be so bad after all. What is the Republican conference's position on the sequester today? Well, two things, Joe. One is we need to honor the, the commitment that we made and not, not shut it off, not do away with the sequester. And secondly, we shouldn't allow it to be replaced with a tax increase. The president got his tax increase in January. And so the Republican position on this really is that we can make this a lot less painful than what the president is out there advertising it will be. And so we're going to offer a proposal that would give him more discretion. If he's really concerned about the impact this is going to have, uh, he would be able then to, to, to target low priority spending as opposed to the high priority spending that he says this is going to impact. And so, we're going to have a vote on that today. Okay. Uh, just curious, aside from all this, just conceptually, philosophically, do you have any problem with closing loopholes? No, I don't, Mika. I think that, you know, we, we've talked a lot about this, and I would like to see us get away from a tax code that is riddled with so many loopholes and exemptions and exclusions. And, and, and But in eliminating those, lower the rates and broaden the tax base with the goal of economic growth. I think the goal in tax reform should be to get the economy growing and expanding again. It's this sluggish, anemic growth that we've seen in the economy that is really complicating our fiscal picture, too. If you're growing at 3 to 4 percent, these fiscal problems get a lot smaller by comparison. But you know that the president wants to close loopholes when we're talking about revenue, right? So Right. No, I know that. I understand that. And some of the things that he's talking about are things that I think many of us would support if it's done in the context of tax reform that lowers the rates and makes us more competitive. And if the goal in tax reform is really to grow the economy. I mean, an expanding economy is what we need to see in this country. If, if we can get that, we get more people back to work. We increase take-home pay. Um, and, and frankly, these fiscal, uh, the fiscal picture that we face going forward becomes a lot smaller. You have more people working, more people investing, more people making money, more people paying taxes. Mark Albert. Senator, why isn't there more urgency about addressing these issues? Why are people taking vacations and why is the meeting with the leaders in the White House tomorrow as opposed to, say, today? Well, I think it's really unfortunate, uh, Mark, that this is wait we waited until tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow is, quote, doomsday, as you said. And, uh, you know, today's the last day it's safe to go outside, evidently. But uh, I frankly think the president has, has so he's been out campaigning. He's thrown over, flown over 5,000 miles around the country <coughs> using these scare tactics when he should have been back here working with Congress. Uh, my guess is that those meetings tomorrow will be more informational, more for optics than anything else. And uh, we'll probably, the sequester will go into effect tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We've got another opportunity, March 27th, to pass a continuing resolution to fund the government for the rest of the year. And so this isn't the last step in the process of, uh, of this debate. I think we're going to have a number of opportunities over the course of the next several months to talk about spending and debt. But we ought to be talking about it in the context of what can we do, how can we reform and restructure these entitlement programs, which is what's really driving federal spending. Ten years from now, entitlement spending and interest on the debt will represent 91 percent of all federal spending if we don't do something about it. Senator, you mentioned earlier this. This Josh Green uh, with Bloomberg. He comes with billions of dollars. Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> yes, Josh. You, you mentioned earlier the imperative of economic growth, but economists say the sequester will uh, cut about six-tenths of a percentage point from GDP, probably end up killing about 750,000 jobs. So why not undo or delay the sequester? 
Well, I think it's it, there, there's a certain amount of pain. And look, Josh, I'm not trying to minimize when you reduce government spending, it'll have some impacts. But I think the short-term consequence in terms of economic growth is, is going to be a lot smaller relative to the long-term harm that we create if we don't get fiscal our fiscal house in order and get spending under control and put policies in place to get economic growth. Uh, I think that if we continue to go on the path that we're on today, uh, we end up by 2018, according to the Congressional Budget Office, when interest rates start to reset and go to a more normal level, you're going to be spending half a trillion dollars a year just paying the, the interest on the debt. And at some point, that's going to exceed the amount that we spend on, on national security. This is a, a train wreck that's waiting to happen. And I know this uh, may have some short-term impacts. I'm not suggesting that it won't. Mm. All I'm simply saying is the goal here, ought, we ought to take the long view. We ought to be looking at what can we get economic, how can we get economic growth, and how can we start bending this cost curve down on federal spending over the long haul. Oh, Melody? Senator Thune, just to underscore what Josh was saying, one of the comments that made by Fed Chair Bernanke was that there is no amount of flexibility that will prevent the economy from not retracting as a result of the sequester. In fact, he is taking the long view. Because you have said that you believe that we need to close loopholes, because that is the president's position, because of the long view on the economy, why is it over the weeks and weeks and weeks leading up to today, not just a meeting tomorrow, but leading up to today, hasn't then be, there been a move toward a long view that involves um, dealing with the loopholes and, in fact, preventing the sequester from going into place? And I hope, Melody, that we will get to a place where we are doing the big deal. I mean, we need to do entitlement reform and tax reform, probably need to do them together. But, you know, picking and choosing um, little tax provisions right now and trying to use them to fix the short term problem, it makes, I think, that long term deal even more difficult to get to. And, and here's my, my, my view on taxes. I mean, the president got what he wanted on January 1st. He got a $620 billion tax increase. With, if you add that to all the tax increases that are going to occur in the health care bill, you're talking about $1.6 trillion in new revenues coming into the federal treasury over a 10-year period. And you, you continue to pile on more and more taxes. It makes that economic growth argument that I was just making that much harder to achieve. I don't think raising taxes is the way to get economic growth. You can't ask anybody about a tax that they would increase uh, that would lead to more economic growth. But I do think that closing loopholes, broadening the base, and lowering the rates needs to be part of comprehensive tax reform that has a long-term eye and, and goal of getting that economic growth that's so important for our economy and so important for our fiscal uh, situation as well. All right, Senator John Thune, thank you very much. By the John. way, say hi to Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Mika. Thanks, Jill. Say I hi will. To... I'll pass in. She's thank awesome. you for sending your book. Oh, yeah. She's reading that. She needs that. But also, she has an incredible voice. She does. She sent thank me you. her music. She We're talking about John's up. daughter. I'm going to be sending it to someone, um, <laughs> and I'm going to ask her if I can tweet it. But she's amazing. Tell her if I, uh, if I can do that. Ask her if I can tweet Tweet her music. Thank Absolutely. you very much, well, Senator. She thinks the same of you. Thanks, Mika. She's a great girl. Thanks, John. Even Thanks, though her John. dad's perfect, it must be hard to live up to. Perfect. Oh, How do you live God. up to John Thune? I don't know. I don't Although know. Although Brittany can. All right. The Supreme Court. By the way, Court. is Thune great or what? Mark. Oh, he's great. No, I'm just talking about as a, as a face and a voice for the Republican Party. He's a reasonable man, and he doesn't like doomsday. It's opposite. All right. Coming up, the Supreme Court turns back the clock to 1965. Now some.